as well. Cool. Hi, Paige. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Um, so this is going to be a really fun, unique session. I think that we're going to go over some of my predictions, my SEO predictions. I'm going to go over content strategy as well. And Paige, you're going to be the superstar of this show. You're going to be... <laughs> Um, not ready review for your site. No, we won't review your site or anything <laughs> like that on demand. But if you have any questions, I would love to hear them. Um, I'm going to go over some kind of unique stuff that I'm even just learning about like recently in the last few months, but Google's algorithm is changing. So first to start Paige, I'd love to know your business, like what you do and where your website's at and kind of where you're at with SEO as well. Uh, sure. So I am a wedding planner new to this industry was originally in healthcare. So um, I'm loving learning about all of these things that they're all new to me. Um, so I have a actual site for my wedding plan business, but um, I didn't know about you then. So I cheated on you for that one, but it was in show it. Um, and that's just for like actual wedding planning and design, like the service part of it. Um, and then I'm trying to launch a separate one, which will be more for the DIY bride with um, like templates and tools and like power hours, that kind of thing. And that's where I purchased um, one of your templates for, and that's what I'm still working on on the side that is not live yet. So that's, that's awesome. That's where I'm at. Great. How long have you been doing wedding planning for? Oh, it's, it's brand new. So just about a year. Brand new. Perfect. Career that's super change. exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting. Well, I feel like it's always like a fun experience to start fresh with something and, and especially like in a new business like that. I mean, you came from corporate, so you've got that like kind of business sav side and then now you're yeah. starting your own business. You're going to be learning so much, you know, yeah, and all of your videos things. are for your wife's uh, wedding photography business. So that's like easy uh -huh. for me to just apply quickly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'll try to use a bunch of wedding planner examples as well. I mean, the, the cool thing about SEO, especially for the wedding industry is it's the, the tax, tactics and strategy is pretty much the same for wedding planners, florists, photographers, all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll jump right in there. Let me share my screen really quick. Um, and if you have any questions, and Jen, if you have any questions either, or like anything you um, kind of want to point out, feel free to stop in the middle. Um, so let me see if I could share my screen here. Oh, we got another person joining in here. Okay, I'm, I'm actually kind of embarrassed because this is like the first time I started a Zoom thing and I don't see screen share. It's it's kind of tricky. It should be just at the bottom, but it may be, let me see if I need to, no, I think you're the host. Yeah. You don't see the green button that says share screen? Mm-mm. That's weird. I'll bring your mouse a little bit. I'll see the top step. Hi, Stephanie. We're just trying to tech, uh, <laughs> figure out some tech here. <laughs> you can also go up to meeting and then go up to start share. And that okay. could be another way of doing it. Thank you. There we go. Cool. Now you guys can see. Sure can. Great. Okay. Perfect. Hi, Stephanie. We were just getting started here. So I was kind of just telling uh, Paige that um, we're going to be going over some of these predictions and a little bit of content strategy. So I'm super excited. There's some algorithm updates. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about that. Stephanie, if you have any questions at all throughout the slides, feel free to just kind of stop or raise your hand um, and we'll answer it right then and there. And we'll also do a little bit of a Q&A at the end here too. So um, let me present this. So what I'm going to be talking about now and what here at Tonic we're going to be focusing on for 2024 when it comes to SEO are three major things. And it's content, uh, which is still king. Like all, content has always been kind of like what SEO is really all about, right? So Google is not Instagram. Google's not YouTube. Google is not Pinterest. It, it's Google. People use Google very differently than some of these other, like, I know that Instagram's a social media, but it is turning into a search engine like TikTok, like Pinterest, like YouTube. But still, people use Google a little bit different. Um, and that is because they're always trying two things. If you ever heard me talk about SEO, you know these two things. And it's people are using Google to find answers to their questions and find solutions to their problems. Content is what gets the answers and the solutions out there. So content is always still going to be at the forefront of SEO. 
um, and information is still king, right? The, the thing that I'm most excited to talk to you guys about today is this EAT acronym, which is a Google acronym. Um, and we'll look at what that actually means, but it's, it's actually affecting and changing the search algorithm and Google's algorithm, which sounds like super crazy and techy, like, oh my God, like, what does that even mean? But it really, it's, it's very, very simple to understand, especially for small businesses and entrepreneurs and solopreneurs like us, because it values human over AI. That's basically kind of like what it is. And then focusing on website user experience. We're already at Tonic starting this. Um, this whole year, we've been just updating our website and not just to try to make it prettier, but we are trying to make it more functional and better experience, like a better experience for the user when they land on it. Not only for like humans, but Google's looking at this as well. And all three of these things, it's really kind of like unique, but all three of these things play a role in each other. And we'll kind of go over that. So my first prediction for 2024, like I mentioned, is content is still king. This one's going to be just pretty standard. Helpful information um, will always be what we're like, our goal for getting ranked is, right? So if you've heard me again, if you're like listening to this, it's because you've you're on the SEO newsletter, you've already kind of started SEO, or you actually have like a great interest about it. So you probably know like, okay, content, like, but then again, a lot of people question like, what is content? So content when it comes to Google is text images and videos. And these are the things that are going to really inform Google of what to rank us for. You're really interested in that. I can send you guys a video on homepage keywords. That's kind of like the intro to getting started with content and keywords and getting ranked on page one. Um, and so Paige, I would love to kind of like talk to you about that too. And once we go into Q and A about your homepage, I want to know if you have keywords on your homepage, I can recommend some keywords for your homepage. We can kind of work on that for your new business. And that will really give you a head start because there's going to be tons of, you know, avenues of getting traffic and getting leads and getting clients. SEO is one of them, but it's a very, very important um, piece of the puzzle of really growing your business. So moving on to prediction two, the one I'm most excited about is prove you have experience, okay? So this is what that um, EEAT or EAT um, stands for, and it's more important than ever, right? So Google has a set of guidelines, and uh, it, the acronym for these guidelines are experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. So before I explain like why this is important, let's go back to what's actually happening at Google. And Google has announced that they've actually hired humans to go through and look at people's websites. And it's kind of like Tinder for Google, right? Like swipe left for, nope, <laughs> that's a not a, like a real website or that website doesn't actually like display trustworthiness or swipe I don't know. I don't use Twitter, Tinder, but swipe left or right, whatever. So there's good and bad. So basically Google's trying to say, um, trying to use actual humans to train their algorithm, their bot to understand. So we, especially in the, in the business and the industry that we're in, we don't necessarily have to worry about an actual humans going, going to our website. They're first going to try to tackle the um, the affiliate industry, because it's so popular nowadays, right? To, I mean, so many people do this, they'll create a, an affiliate website and they'll have like, you know, um, the best hiking shoes under a hundred dollars. These people have never, ever, ever used any of the hiking boots on this website, but I've never even gone hiking actually. Yeah. Just yeah. Even <laughs> <laughs> but I have an opinion about it because their goal is to get people to go to the website, click it, and then they earn income. They have no experience. They may have expertise because they've read about these boots, but that doesn't really make them a trustworthy like source of information. Google's trying to combat that because what's happening is Google has noticed, and I'm curious to, to hear what you guys think too. Um, Google has noticed that people are going to Quora and Reddit and other threads to search for real information over just searching it in Google. And, 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 and Google's literally announced that that's what they're trying to combat is because Google has become a bit spammy, especially in some of these industries like affiliates and everything. 
Right. So and our industries, like someone who doesn't have stake in the game, you know, it's like reading mm-hmm. Yelp reviews or anytime I'm on target shopping and I see, Oh, it was a sponsored review. Cause they got the product for free. I'm exactly. instantly like, nope. nope, like, okay, like strike all of that. And I think Google is basically just doing that. If like, we couldn't trust Amazon reviews because everyone just got the products for free. You wouldn't mm-hmm. take those into account anymore. So there's this sense of like, how can we prove that this is a real person with real opinions, with real expertise, with real experience, with real authority. And that's where I think it's so helpful to remember, like that's one of our biggest assets in the age of AI is mm-hmm. experience, authority, trustworthiness. Like we have those things. So mm-hmm. if you can demonstrate that in your content, I think that is just going to be increasingly vital. Totally. That's that's exactly it. The one, the one thing that AI doesn't have in this list is experience. I mean, you can ask AI to write a blog post um, and they'll talk about a subject like in great detail, which kind of proves their expertise because they kind of like have read every single thing on the internet since 2021, um, which gives them authoritativeness and you can trust it. But the thing that they don't have is experience. So that is what Google is eventually going to place higher on cert on page one than, than pages that don't have experience. So, you know how, like, especially in the wedding industry, right page. So you, you go to search like a venue, it's always the not wedding wire, this and that, that are always ranking first, right? Google is the algorithms changing a little bit. So we as entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and smaller businesses with actual experience can now start outranking these bigger blogs because the not in itself doesn't necessarily have experience at this venue. Uh, What they're probably going to try to do is say, well, the photographers we work with do, but technically the photographers they work with are people that pay them for a feature or pay them to be listed, things like this. So it doesn't actually work as well as someone like you, Paige, who has have planned a wedding at a venue. And then you write a blog post about that venue. That is so much more powerful and so much more trustworthy than the not just trying to get people to click because they probably make referral money off of get the clicks that they have or they're charging photographers for listings, things like that. So Google's trying to move away from that. So that is the really exciting part about the algorithm update for 2024 is this idea of like, you could just explain that you're an expert in this and you have experience a few different ways. So let's actually talk about a few different ways you can you can actually kind of demonstrate that you have experience over others. Um, one way um, that I've I've heard recently is always adding an author box to the end of your blog posts. What this is going to do is it's going to again at this point Google's hiring humans to do this, but they're training their algorithm to do this, and their algorithm is going to eventually start to look for this. Did a real human write this? Who was this real human? So an author box kind of explains all that. So I could say, if I write a blog post, I could say like, you know, like, hey guys, thanks for reading. I'm Ryan Moreno, a 12 year SEO expert. I've been in the wedding industry for this long. I really, I love teaching, blah, blah, you know, photographers and wedding planners, all these things about SEO, blah, blah, blah. That right there in itself, like AI could technically write that, but like that it's not real. And there's going to be other ways for Google to find out if it's real or not. So that's one way is by adding like author uh, boxes and kind of like the bigger picture of that is being a real human on your website. Show your face, say your name, say who you are, say what you've done and what you've accomplished. That is going to separate you from the bots online that are trying to take all the traffic, right? And Ryan, like, I'm assuming that that probably also plays into the content of your actual posts. Like if you're thinking of kind of each blog post as like a landing page for like, someone may not have read any other blog, but they landed on this one. This is where you should like quantify Mm -hmm. your experience and expertise as well. Like I've shot at this venue 10 times and across that, like, you know, across five years of experience with this or whatever, or even page, like just getting started, it would be like in my venue visit, I I was able to ascertain yep. or like when I spoke to the venue manager or like, you know, in planning my last wedding here, I learned a few things like anything that you can do to indicate, like you didn't just look up a few Google images and call it a day. You know, right. <laughs> I think that exactly. is that like another strategy? 
Yes. I, so that was literally point number two. Oh, was sorry. <laughs> I, I, no, no, that's perfect. I like, I love that. I mean, it makes sense that like your mind went there. Yeah. It, the point number two is I'm an expert on this topic because language, you need to okay. use that type of language all over your website because that is li- like Google's no longer just looking for keywords. And that's like something that has been known for about a year now. Um, but a lot of people still don't know that like people are still keyword stuffing, but keyword count is becoming less and less and less of a, a, like a, an importance. And it's what's becoming more important is this language proving what you're talking about on that page. So use, you know, I'm an expert because language, just like Jen was saying um, in my visit to this venue, that right there, again, Google's going to read that and go, oh, they have been to the venue. Cool. Great. Right. So that is what we want to do. A few other ways, linking to portfolios from blog posts and on your homepage and on your about page and on like all these different pages, always keep linking out to your work, your experience um, of actually doing what you do. Right. Um, videos are always a great way to, especially showing your face and talking, Google can tra- like transcribe that and then put it into like, oh, this is supporting the topic. It's real, um, for photographers, um, and, and, and wedding, um, planners like you pages, it, this one, this next one's going to be pretty easy, but it's ha- use original photography, use original images. We live in a world where getting stock images is so, so easy. And that's a great thing. Like using stock images is okay. It's not going to hurt your SEO. But in reality, if you can use original images that you or someone you work with directly at that venue or at that uh, about this subject or topic has, um, if you have original photography, it's only going to help you more. When you upload something online to like your media library, it's the first time it's ever been uploaded and Google's going to know that. Like there are no other references to that exact image online. So they know it's original photography. So use original photography um, and then just adding reviews to your website, to your blog posts, things like that. So all of these things you can kind of see really show you're a human and that you have experience, okay? So that was prediction number two. I just think that's really important. We're going to talk about um, a little bit about that more here in a second. Prediction number three and the final prediction that I'm going to talk about is user experience is vital. And you can kind of see, you know, like we have the last slide was about experience. This slide is also about experience, two different kind of sides of the coin, but it's the same. User experience is going to play a huge role in your website's SEO for the future, because there are so many websites out there, so many more people in your industry um, than there was two years ago, even. There's billions of websites out there, right? So not all in the same industry, but we need to make sure that our websites are clear, easy to use, make sense, and give information accurately and quickly. Okay, so I want you guys to be clear and transparent as possible. The idea behind this is a readability score as well. Google's going to rank you on that. And the idea behind that is, can a 12-year-old scan your website and tell you what your services are? If they can't, there's something wrong going on. Of course, you're going to have language on your website for literally for your ideal client who's not a 12-year-old. They're probably in their 30s, ready to get married, this and that. So it's a little bit different, but the idea is people... I mean, think about it. We, we go to Instagram and we just scroll, 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 scroll. And we're looking for something that wows us. And it's this kind of the same experience on someone's website. They want something that like, not only just wows them or like it confirms, this is the person that I'm looking for. Page yeah. has the experience that I want. Page has like, oh, cool. Like wedding planner. That's what I was looking for. I'm not confused if Paige is a wedding photographer or just a planner or does she do full day planning or does she just do that? Like, it's very clear what you do right off the bat on your homepage specifically. So again, prediction number three, work on your website and make sure it is very, very easy to use. And it is clear about who you are and what you do. And it's so sneaky. I mean, we were just working on this. We're working on this right now with our tonic site because there are certain things where like it feels easy to you and then you don't realize people are getting lost, you know, or yeah. like people aren't clicking that thing that I thought was really obvious or I thought that button was really clear and people are missing right. it over and over and over. So one of the things that we always suggest is like, 
have someone browse your website sitting next to you. It's one of the most horrifying things you can possibly do because I literally had my best friend sit down with our website and she's worked for us before. And she was like, so where do I find this one product? Like, I feel like I've clicked in all these places and I can't find it anywhere. And I was like, it's right here. It's right. And she's like, well, I, I've been to the website like five times. I still didn't see that. So there's just, there's this level of familiarity that really breeds this, this inability to see the things, you know, see the back of your head, you know, like right. you can't see it back there. You need someone to see it for you. So that's one great way of doing it. And there are a couple of other websites where you can literally have a random person audit your website. So you literally, it's a random person, it will send them your link and they'll send you a video back of them going through your website and saying like, Hey, what does this mean? Or like, this is really nice or whatever. So Mm -hmm. there are a few different ways of doing it, but asking a few people to browse your website, I highly recommend doing it in person because often people will be like, I think it's really pretty if you send it to them like on email. But if you sit down next to them, they're going to be like, where, what does this mean? They're going to say the things that they wouldn't say um, Mm -hmm. when they're writing. So highly recommend yeah. um, trying to just have someone audit it who's not familiar with your site because we just can't see the back of our hair sometimes. Yeah, that's so that's so such a good point. I feel like too, if you were to watch someone and you were sitting there, you weren't talking and they were like, oh, such a pretty site, but then they didn't know where to click. You would see that. You would notice that because you're like in your head, you're like, like, I want them to go to my portfolio, right? But if they're not doing that or or they're like, oh, cool. So what should I click? Like, yeah, it just kind of goes to show like, oh, shoot, like I don't have enough call to actions. I don't have something that's like, ooh, what does this do? Let's click here. Um, So yeah, so it's really important. So that one's kind of simple as well. But again, all three of the predictions play a role, right? So content, um, showing expertise, and just making sure your website is clear are what you should focus on for 2024. Going into stats, Stats don't lie. We uh, looked at the, um, uh, this big art. What's that? I said, and hips. <laughs> yes. Like hips. Stats <laughs> don't lie. Um, we basically took three, uh, 4,000 um, companies, search engine journal took 4,000 companies and they asked them the question, what are the most effective strategies you've uh, used recently? Content strategy, topic clustering, and link building are the number, uh, the top three things. So that might go over your head, but I'm basically going to explain this to you and then give you a content strategy, a very simple one that you guys can actually follow for the rest of the um, the, the year and into 2024. That's going to make like blogging and content very, very easy, right? So creating a simple but effective content strategy. Um, this is something I follow. I do this with tonic. I do this with tons of clients that are always asking me, like, I just don't even know where to start with my blog. Cause blogging is going to be the best way for you to actually get clients and to get visibility and to grow your SEO. So how can you create a simple and effective content strategy? Uh, I just want to remind you guys that it only takes one blog post to like book a whole year of clients. Like it's really that simple, right? You don't need to have 365 blogs a year and have 300 of them all ranking on page one to kind of get some visibility. It takes one blog post that a ton of people are searching in your industry, in your niche. And a ton could be like a hundred people a week are searching that. So 400 people a month. That is the power of SEO that could book you up, especially in our small um, businesses. But topic clusters are what I want to talk to you guys about. This is a strategy and it's very easy um, to follow this strategy when, when blogging, but a topic cluster is basically a group of blog posts or pages that are on your website. Um, and they cover a topic in great detail, not only just in one blog post, but in like a series of blog posts, right? So each topic cluster has a main cornerstone page. So let's just say Disney world planning, um, so page for you, this could be like planning your, your wedding in whatever location you're at, Cincinnati or um, wherever you're at, right? So Cincinnati wedding planning or pl- how to plan a wedding in Cincinnati. In that blog post, you're going to be talking about a ton of different topics. So here, Disney World planning, in that one blog post, you're going to be talking about Disney World packing list, budgeting, best times to visit, best Disney World hotels, uh, itineraries and restaurants. Okay, so you're going to take that blog post 
write it, it's going to be a cornerstone piece, which means it is kind of like the head of everything. It goes over everything. You don't have to go over each of these kind of subtopics in extreme detail, but you need to kind of like pinpoint or bullet point everything on this list, right? From here, you're going to then create six blog posts about these subcategories. So each of these will then become a blog post as well. So now you have a Disney World planning blog post, but you also have a Disney World packing list blog post that goes over crazy detail, everything you need to pack when you go to Disney World. And if you're a Disney World expert, then you obviously know how to write that blog post and you have tips and tricks for someone that has never been to Disney World. That is the key of this, right? You're using your experience and your expertise to really write blog posts that are really going to um, give quality information. So not only do you have one blog post now, like I mentioned, now you have seven blog posts and they cluster a topic and Google's going to see that. And how are they going to see that is because you are going to link this blog post to, and like somewhere in this blog post, you're going to link to each of these individual blog posts as well. In each of these blog posts, you're going to be linking back to the main post as well. And what that does is it, ca it causes like this kind of like link cluster that Google's going to just keep going back and forth with and understand, whoa, they know this subject really well. The only way Google could ever find a link on your website is if it's actually linked somewhere on your website. Other pages that are just created and you never link to it are called zombie pages and they don't actually help your SEO. So you need to be linking back and forth, back and forth with each other. And this also like, I, this was kind of mind blowing for me because my brain does not think this way. My brain thinks like I should write this one post about how I plan to go to Disney world when like just writing that one post is not necessarily going to like get me all the SEO juice. It might, if I split that one topic into several different posts and was like, so for example, if you are, and I know we're going to talk examples in just a second, but you know, Paige, if you were going to like talk about like detail trends or something like that. Don't write mm -hmm. one post on detail trends, right? Like write six different posts on detail trends and then break it down like detail trends for stationary, trends yep. for, you know, styling, trends for plate, you know, plates or something like that. Plates, whatever, table settings, <laughs> <laughs> trends for plates, super great post. Um, but like breaking it down into like, how can I stack a bunch of different posts mm -hmm. together? That to me is like so helpful because I think in like one big piece. Um, so like, for example, if we were going to do like, some post on, you know, how do you show it? We shouldn't do one post on how do you show it? We should do one pillar post on how did you show it? And then break down 10 other things that would then yep. all make this like huge authority cluster of like, you can really trust us. We're an expert on show it. We actually yep. write so much co you know, co so much content on show it. We're really going to be this main source of expertise for you on how do you show mm -hmm. it? So I thought yeah. that I think that this is just so helpful, both for SEO and then also like it makes content creation easier because you're not having to come up with 30 different blog post topics. You can come up with one and then write 10 blog posts about it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it kind of takes the guessing game of like, what's, what am I going to blog about next? So we kind of want to pick up big topics and to go to, to kind of go off your point as well, Jen, when we were writing about show it, there were many times that we were ranking even above show it. And that's because we were using it so well, we were writing more detailed posts than show it was actually doing. So it's not that Google's going to be like, well, they're not show it. So we're not going to rank them. It's really about valuable information. I'm in Houston, actually. It's so funny. Well, oh, you are you're in Houston? Slide. Wait, I'm waiting for this venue to open. <laughs> Like, oh my God, that's so funny. Wow. That's so funny that this is what you I, You know, when I was creating this, <laughs> I had this feeling. I was like, I should choose Houston. I don't know why. And then I thought to myself, I was like, I wonder if someone will be from Houston in the wedding industry when yes, I talk I'm like about stalking them. them, trying to like look at the, it's not done yet. It's not finished one. This, the Which one is it? The, the image that you have, they're just now finishing it. It's oh my gosh, world. that is so funny. Yeah. I mean, so this, okay. So that is such a good example of why you, you page want to create content about these types of venues. Cause I was just doing this as an example, but I literally typed in like luxury wedding venues in Houston. And these came up, not only did these come up just from the venues, like their, the venue website themselves, but other photographers websites came up that talked about these. 
And so it's, it's funny. Cause like I learned about some venues there from photographers, from planners and from the venues themselves. So that is the important part about writing content. Not only like Paige, you're not going to write content about like how to become a wedding planner or what it's like to be a wedding planner, wedding planner tips and tricks. Cause you want people to hire you for that. What you're going to give information about is information that people are looking for beforehand, right? So um, we'll go into this in just a second and I'll kind of go over like this whole strategy um, once Jen shares that link for us. So five luxury wedding venues in Houston. Why would you as a wedding planner write that? That's It's because people that are looking for wedding planners possibly are looking for wedding venues before they're even looking for a wedding planner or they don't even know they need a wedding planner, right? So this idea of like getting in front of the client before they even know they need you or before they even are looking for someone like you is the goal. This works for photographers. This works for florists as well. Even anyone in the wedding industry can talk about venues. Paige, you have a unique kind of uh, it, it, like um, strategy as well where you can talk about florists you can talk about photography. You could do this for five luxury wedding photographers, five beach photographers, or five of the best Houston wedding photographers. You can talk about that. It doesn't even to be five. It could be three. It could be 15, um, however many. But basically, you'll want to write a blog post about this. This blog post right here, which is the cornerstone one, this one is going to um, actually talk about all five of these posts but in like lesser detail, you're just going to like highlight each of these. Then you're going to write a blog post about each of these blog, uh, these venues as well. And that's going to be like greater detail. So you're going to do some research yourself. You're going to probably go do a venue tour, take some pictures of it, um, meet with the wedding planner or, or the, the coordinator there at the, the venue. If they have one kind of talk to them get some professional insight. That's your experience. That's your, your expertise right there that AI can't obviously have, right? So you're going to write it. And then I want you to think about like the angle you're writing it from, like you're writing it as a wedding planner. Why is this venue? Why is the bell tower on 34th? Like a great wedding venue, you know, because you are a planner, you know, that they have this and this and this, which helps your clients have successful weddings, things like that. That's going to bring value, bring information, bring um, security to the reader as well, and then put you in an authoritative place as well, okay? So once you do that, you literally could just rinse and repeat, okay? So let's say you're in the skincare industry, achieving radiant skin, a guide to finding the right skincare expert, right? So this is going to be something that you talk about tons of different topics in that blog post, including daily skincare routines, common skin problems, natural versus synthetic skincare is a science of anti-aging, but then all of those subtopics will become posts as well, right? So again, I was trying to do some for diff different industries, but it's the same thing, right? So if, as a copywriter, you can do unlocking your writing potential, finding the perfect writing coach, and then talk about what makes a good coach, things like that, and then breaking that into different posts as well, okay? So topic clusters serve as starting points for creating content that provides value information to readers. And just remember that your, your cornerstone post will link to each of the actual like subtopic posts or the cluster posts is what they call them. And each cluster post will link back to the cornerstone post. And you can also link, you know, from the individual venue pages to other individual venue pages. You just want to remember to always be linking. Internal links are great. It's how Google finds other information. It's how they tie information together. So if we go back to this over here, when we link, we're, we're, we're basically telling Google that we're tying this content together. We're tying this content together. And if all of this is tied together, they start to see you as the expert instead of just one post. Wow, you have six posts on it. So again, don't forget to actually link uh, your stuff, okay? And again, I was talking about the angle of your writing, okay? So I want you to provide a unique 
ex expert opinions, not recycled popular opinions, right? So instead of just doing some research on a venue or a topic, and then just like basically doing what everyone else is doing and, and writing the same kind of style of post, be unique, be like write in a, in a way that like makes you stand out. And that really plays a role back into that acronym, the EAT acronym. It plays a role into you have experience and that's why you're able to say something that AI can't, right? So talk yeah. about and your experience. We've seen this all the time. And there's nothing I hate more than like landing on a blog post when I'm researching and they tell me the same information, exactly the same information over and over and over and over. Like I'm just reading like what I could have Googled and found out as well. And I think it's yeah. one of those things where um, one of our top affiliates, Sarah, she has this one blog post about tonic that's really successful for her. And it's because she actually has some like solid personal opinions in the post that she writes where she's like, I thought this was actually kind of confusing, but this was really great. She actually had perspective and point of view. And she's had people hire her as a copywriter after reading that post because mm -hmm. she like basically had the balls to create original content. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the things that I would say, like, don't just say like what people can find anywhere else, have a strong opinion, express a strong take. If you hate a certain plate in your tablescape post, be like, you know, I will not be using this. Like just actually have a take that makes it worth reading. Cause if it's just yeah. the same information that people can find anywhere else, then it's not useful or right? it's not valuable to anyone. Um, and it's not going to convert, you know, they're not going to become a client. It's not going to be super valuable. So I think this is where increasingly people want a real opinion. They want a mm -hmm. strong perspective. And so I think that's one of the things that we can do the best job of is actually advocating for something in our post, not yep. just being like, well, like, I think this is fine. I think this is fine. Like here's some, here's some generic information about, you know, show it. Yeah. And this, I mean, this goes for not only posts, but like pages on your website, your homepage, your about page, your services page, pages. I mean, again, again, the, the, the algorithm that Google is starting to pump out is more human centric. They want real humans to be providing information, not just, uh, AI bots. Okay. So we're kind of coming to the end here the reason why we do this is topical authority, right? So again, you as a new business can outrank um, a company that has been in business way longer um, simply because you talk about a topic more. And that is what Google calls topical authority. We basically want to prove that we are really experts about a, 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 um, a topic so again, we can't just add keywords to our website. As we all know, like SEO way back in the day um, was just about keywords. You could stuff keywords um, into anything and it would it would rank. I love this story because I used to use Craigslist way back in the day, right? When Craigslist was a thing and you would search for like, I think I was searching for a car and so I typed in like Ford Ranger or something, right? Mm -hmm. But I would get all these, all these other like BMWs and all these Chevy cars and I don't know, like, and I would see at the bottom, the, the, the poster would literally just type in like Chevy comma, um, Ford comma truck comma car. Com and basically that was a way that they could get on page one of Craigslist of that search on every single time. So they could sell faster. And again, it's the same that people would do with Google. They used to just like, just throw so many keywords on one page and they would actually rank for all of those keywords because the algorithm was like, kind of just like simple at that time. It was, you say something, we rank you for it. Now it's a little bit different. That's why they've created, you know, the EEAT, the, uh, the authoritativeness, the trustworthiness, expertise and experience. And all of that together is topical authority. If you can really prove your expertise at, at something, Google is going to put more authority there. There are literal numbers that they can grade your website with um, that are like domain authority and then topical authority on top of that. So it's not something to take lightly. If you're going to really work on SEO and, and try to get ranked um, it's something that we basically need to, to keep in mind of don't just talk about a subject lightly. 
really spend some time to bring valuable information. And again, this isn't, you know, like something that you're going to have to like work on for every single day for the next like year, all of 2024, you're just writing blog posts and this and that. No, it's really just taking maybe a few days a month or maybe like a few days a quarter to write a blog post or a series of blog posts that are highly, highly, um, like highly quality uh, blog posts. So you really want uh, Google to to know that you're talking about you know a subject in great detail. So with all that said, basically, if you guys have, if, Paige, if you have questions, Stephanie, if you have any questions, I'd love to go over your individual kind of like blog strategies, your homepage strategy. Are you ranking? Are you not ranking? How can I help you kind of start 2024 off with like the best foot possible? Sure. Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, so I think what I'm struggling with is I really did not know much about SEO. I think before I discovered your little camp that I went to, but at that point, my site was already created, right? Copywriting, everything's done. Yeah. So now I'm kind of at a point where I don't really know where else to sneak in keywords. I've done like saving my photos differently. I'd added, I've added descriptions behind the scenes, but I feel like so I guess I would want an honest opinion. Do you feel like I need to add more to my homepage? Because my homepage mm. isn't really set up to have lots of words, right? And I'm finding yeah. like the people that that are ranking first, second, third, I mean, they have like Wedding Planner or Houston listed probably like 40, 50 times, but that's just not yeah. how my design is set up. Um, but what it's sounding like is if I, I maybe just start blogging a little bit, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but if I focus on those a little bit more, then maybe that will be, that'll be less of a priority and it'll still help me rank. Um, so I think that's what I'm dealing with now is that my design that I have isn't really set up to just keep throwing in all the keywords mm. everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So that's probably my biggest struggle. Yeah, we could definitely take a look at your at your site if you're comfortable with that too. And I can yeah, kind of go over that. I'll just cut into the chat. And I do want to kind of encourage you with what you were just saying, like, for sure, like you, if you're okay with your homepage, like totally, that's fine. Like we can keep it, you know, your homepage, how it is. And you can actually start a blog strategy. So everything's kind of like, like your heavy SEO hitters are all kind of in your blog. Um, and so yeah. when people do search for something wedding planning related, they land on your blog post. And then from there, they can go to your homepage, about page and everything like that, where it's a bit more personal, not so focused on SEO, but let me pull up your website. No, and that's here. fine. I just didn't know if you felt like it, if it had to be on the homepage to even help anything, Frank, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely would say I'm not a it, copywriter. That's <laughs> like, no, yeah. I wish I knew all this before. <laughs> yeah. Me, There's so many things either. I would have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not a copywriter. It's funny because we, when we do launch camp, my session is usually right after or before the copywriting session. So I'm always just like, I always open it with like, please listen to like what Caitlin is going to say about copywriting. I'm not a copywriter. Just sneak keywords into whatever Caitlin tells you to do. I've met with Caitlin before. And yes, she sounds like a writer, but she speaks. So uh -huh. she gets <laughs> yep. it. I will also say like, I, I do think like, I don't know, there can be the sense of like, well, I did all this wrong. And it's like, you know, now it's really hard to go back and fix it all. The nice thing is that like what I found from working with Ryan is that it's like a lot easier than I thought to go back and like add some keywords, like yeah. add some keywords to different headings to like make a few blog posts. So I would just say that if like it feels a little bit like a lost cause in some ways for any reason, like adding some of that stuff back is not that big of a deal. It's just more like a matter of knowing wh what to add and where. Um, and I think that's where like even looking at, you know, Ryan's wife's site, Kenna's site, is really helpful because it, it just made sense to me to be like, oh, I could put, you know, Houston wedding planner here. I could put, you know, Houston wedding planner here. I could put South Houston wedding right here. So just getting an idea of some of the stuff that you could add, I think is really helpful, but obviously. <laughs> Ryan's the no, best. I know what you mean. I was like, I'll adjust what my buttons say, what my, um, you know, call right. to actions are, but exactly. then it like only added Houston three times. <laughs> <I was gonna. Right. laughs> sure. so 40 more ways to add it. <laughs> Crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So Paige, I'm going to go over your side a little bit, and this is kind of just like, like my first 
kind of step when I look at someone's website. The first I thing I noticed is if I type in Houston, I only see Houston written on your homepage twice. So if you want your homepage to actually rank on page one of Houston Wedding Planner, you'll probably want to add that a, a bit more. And then you'll probably want that to be your H1 as well. H1, you know, and show where you can kind of select H1, all that. So you'll definitely want your, your H1 to include Houston Wedding Planner. Let me go to my uh, wife's site really quick and I'll show you. Typically people would think this is the H1 kind of show photography, but it's actually not. This is just a, a regular paragraph. This is her H1 right here. So we were kind of sneaky about sneaky, that. And we threw yeah. the H1 up sure. in the corner. Oh, it just looks like styled eyebrow text, but it is the H1. And the H1 literally says Sarasota wedding photographer, right? And the reason is because I want kind of to rank for Sarasota wedding photographer. And after about three months, she was on page one after we did exactly what I'm going to show you what we did on her site. So if you go to Sarasota wedding photographer on Google and you scroll down, you see Kenna shot right there. Okay. Right on page one. So I think on your site, you'll probably want to have Houston wedding planner a, a bit more. Um, yeah. And I'm not even trying to rank first, just like a little higher, you know, <laughs> I want you to rank position one. I want you to rank first, <laughs> um, which is totally possible. Right. Again. So again, now, and we just talked about all this, like kind of experience and expertise kind of stuff. So, and I told you, it's not about keyword stuffing and it really isn't. However, it is important to have exact match keywords on your website. So exact match basically just means like if you want to rank for Houston wedding planner, have the words Houston wedding planner on your website. Now this is good. This is probably all one sentence. So it's not as powerful, but maybe up here you can say full service Houston wedding planning and design. Um, or put that underneath here and just have Houston wedding planner, whatever you want to rank for, right? So if we go to Google and we type in Houston wedding planner, we type enter, obviously the knot comes up first, um, could be changing in the future, right? After what we just learned. But look yeah, at this, so this is a wedding planner. The, if you click on that and you search on her site, that's the one I was talking about. She just okay. has keywords all over the place. So we have- I think it's Houston. for maybe wedding planner or something, but one of them. Okay. Yeah, this one has three. I'll, I will say this again, it, because it's not so much about keyword count, you'll, you'll notice that some people have like, like she only has it three times. You have it twice. You should be like comparable there. However, she's probably been in business longer than you and her website okay. domain has been online longer. And so what that does is it adds to um, this website's domain authority. So again, that's not something you can technically compete with, but what you can compete with is information on your website and it being very, very easy to find that information and very clear about who you are. So again, she just has Houston and destination award-winning event planner up in the very top. I still think that you could probably rank better by adding more clear, better exact match keywords like Houston wedding planner. Okay. So yeah, so that website doesn't even look like it's going to be too hard for you to outrank. Again, it's just going to be about like having your website online a little bit longer and then adding more of those keywords and then adding a ton of value. Let's see, here's another planning website. I like to open up actual planners, like people in, who are doing exactly what you do and then searching from there too. So if I type in Houston, again, only one time. So this is, I mean, I think this is going to be a great keyword for you to try to rank for yeah, because it's funny, it is. I didn't look at Houston wedding planner. I think I just put in wedding planner. Or something. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would try going more for, I mean, I know people are typing in just wedding planner and then Google's kind of like looking at their geolocation. That's why it pops up sometimes. Like Google wants to know your location because they want to serve you better results. But the only reason that they would know that you are in Houston is if you put it on your website. So that's why I want you to put it more and more and more on your website. If I go to Kenna's site and I, let me let all the text load because she's got like that kind of load as you scroll and I type in Sarasota, it's 13 times. So it's not like it's crazy. It's not like we're adding it 99 times to her website. Like that would be like spammy. 
if I scroll down, you see it here. Okay, cool. Based in Sarasota, Florida. Cool here. Nothing in here. That's just inspiration. Sarasota wedding photography. See that? This is kind of like a, I would call this a sneaky keyword. It is. Sneaky. I just add it underneath the gallery. It kind of gives, you know, like, again, Google's not going to ding you for like being even more clear, but like we just put a bunch of photos and then we put Sarasota wedding photographer. That makes sense. Yeah. No, this is good. Scrolling that's down. kind of what I was concerned about is how do I keep my design? but still add these in so these are yeah different. so eyebrow text and subtext what we call them are going to be like your your go-to's like here hello we are ken and ryan and then we have sarasota wedding photographers so instead of just skipping that part because we've already said it we're saying it again and it's not going to be annoying to your customers because what they're looking at are the images they're going to look at the names the big bold text they may read this but they'll probably click about kind of things like that as we scroll down skips all that. This is something that's very important. Um, you're going to want to add portfolio and examples on your homepage, but you want to be very strategic about which ones. Kenna wants to rank for a, like specific venues in Sarasota and be known for Sarasota, not Naples, not Miami, not this or that. Miami kind of, but like Sarasota is number one. So on her homepage, she has Sarasota's Powell Crosley Estate Wedding Venue. That's a venue kind of blog post all about that. Sarasota's best engagement session locations, the Sarasota Ritz Carlton Wedding Venue. And then she has one about Zwa, which is another location she's trying to go for. But you can kind of see Sarasota's the number one. And in our blog post titles, we're not writing, you know, like uh, Jessica and Eddie, beautiful wedding. Like that gives no kind of like context or value. It's the Sarasota Ritz Carlton wedding venue. And then maybe up here we can write like, like Nick and Carla or whatever the client's names are. But the client's names aren't that important, especially to your ideal clients or client visitors. It's, it's, it, is this blog post going to answer my question? And Google's looking at that as well. Scrolling down again, planning your Sarasota wedding, recommended vendors. So she has a vendors list. So again, using Sarasota, that keyword all over the place. So, and then at the very end, Sarasota wedding photographer. So on your website, you can kind of mimic this as well. Just sprinkle in those keywords everywhere, add blog posts and, and portfolio pieces if you have them right now into your website. And that way you can actually add more keywords to those homepages. That would be my number one recommendation for you. Once that's done, then start on your blog and go into, um, what we call like long tail keywords. So your main umbrella keyword uh, would be Houston wedding planner. Like Kenna's is Sarasota wedding photographer. Then she writes about venues and those long, those would be long tail kind of keywords that are all about Sarasota wedding photographer. Hopefully that makes sense. Is that, is that kind no, of, it does. Makes sense? no, that's helpful. It's helpful. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let Stephanie um, but yeah, I, I, the design wise, I don't think that like you have anything to worry about. I could probably look, oops, look at like the mobile. Um, but I mean, right off the bat, it's, it's clear. I love that this is big and bold. I will. Can I ask a question for all of you guys? Is it clear from the home page at that first page that it's a wedding planner? Or do you feel like like the balancing timeless and some modern? Should I change that to something else? Because I go back and forth with that all the time. I change that a lot. <laughs> yeah. If you're asking me, in my opinion, I definitely think it should say something like Houston wedding planner. Okay. Well, and fine. then and then under here, like balancing so timeless. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Again, That's looking fine. at Kenna's site. Kenna's married to an SEO specialist, so she's obviously uh, yeah, going to have like <laughs> keywords on her website. No, I know. I mean, that's the other thing, right? <laughs> when you name your company, like I know now, like people at events in the company name or wedding, so that would have been yep. more sense, but too late. Exactly. You know, it's funny though, because Kenna always fights me. She's like, <laughs> I don't want it to say Kenna shot photography. I want it to say like elegant, timeless, romantic, like wedding imageries for like future generations. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, great. Why don't we say that down here instead? But you're right. Um, so you that's don't, kind of like, the idea. Think about it at all. Exactly. Yeah, and you're. I I can almost guarantee you, people landing on your website aren't gonna aren't gonna go here and be like, oof, like why doesn't she say something ultra like inspirational instead of something clear? Like why did she do that? They're literally gonna be like, oh, perfect, Houston mm -hmm. wedding planner. That's exactly what I was looking at. And they're probably most likely gonna be looking at the image behind here because that's what you're selling the experience, the vibe, the emotions, all that are going to play a really big role 
the text is mostly for Google. So I think I think you're on a, a really great like track. Just kind of be a little bit more strategic about the keywords you use and the clarity that you bring. Again, if you have someone that you know that's 12 in your life, like a niece or a nephew or something, ask them like, hey, what do you think my website's about? And see, see if they can see like they really pick it up. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, Stephanie. I'd love to answer any questions you have as well. Hey, thank you so much. Um, so I'm actually, I have a current business and I'm launching a new business next week. And oh, cool really excited for it it's actually about weddings too it's a wedding vendor directory and um, I started as a personal trainer and then I niched down to working with brides and I created these Facebook groups that literally blew up to hundreds of thousands of brides in them wow. and we don't allow promotions in that in the groups so vendors have been wanting to have a place to promote and I'm now launching a, a wedding vendor directory and you would have to type in um, the bridesList.com slash home. Here, I'll send it to you okay. because it's there's a coming soon page right now on the home page. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't done any of the SEO yet. And I really need to get on top of that. So there's no blogs up or anything. Um, okay. And, and I don't know where to start. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think so. This is going to be fun because I'm that, that that's I mean it's the wedding industry and <clears throat> I'm familiar with that, but the the directory part is probably a little new to me. So I'm going to ask you some questions and see if we can okay. kind of figure out the keywords because you are the expert and you know your audience and your clients more than I do. So that's like the benefit, like you kind of know all that information. So we basically just need to pull that out of you and see what they're searching for. Those are going to be the keywords that you're ranking for. Okay. So your homepage is a little bit unique um, in the sense of like, like typically people are going to be searching for venues. And so that's what we were talking about. You would probably want to create blog posts about venues, wedding yeah. planners, all these different things. Those would be your, like, like the, the, the listing pages. You'll want a lot of information about these venues and vendors. So when people search those vendors, your website pops up, but your homepage I want to know like on a, on a kind of like umbrella level, what is like the purpose of your website? The purpose originally was to, so a lot of brides always ask where, like, where's the best um, hair, like who's the best hairstylist or where mm -hmm. can I, like, who would you recommend for a photographer in Houston? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I wanted to find a place where, they could go to and I feel good about recommending mm. and the process for this is um, vendors have to apply and I have to approve them before they get listed so mm. as much as I can I'm trying to vet the vendors and provide mm -hmm. brides with a very useful tool um, I know there's huge directories out there but I wanted to create something a little bit more like just smaller and uh, more curated yeah that's what I think that's note. what I was looking for have you ever heard of the friend club? So that's brand new as of two months ago. And they're doing that just for, <clears throat> sorry, wedding professionals. Oh, I don't know what happens um, <laughs> to find other wedding for the pro professionals. And I know they're, they're thinking about doing something similar to this too. And I think it's called the wedding club, but that might be good just to get a sense of how they're organizing things. Just to help you. Oh, cool. So what is it called? Totally. Look up the friend club. I know that's the name on Instagram. I'm currently trying to find their actual information. Okay. You, but, but something to know there. And so what is it going back to, to go ahead. It, Sorry, was there another name that you said? The friends club. That's the one just for vendors to like talk with each other, but they're also starting the wedding club. And I, I think from what you're saying, it's going to be sort of similar to what you're doing, like a smaller mm. group and you have to be a member oh. in order to be on it. Okay. That sounds cool. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So Stephanie, what I heard from you kind of when you were talking is like, this is not going to like the not like it's kind of everyone and everything right in the wedding industry and wedding wire, the same kind of deal. They, they probably will say like, oh, we're curated this and that, but really what your angle is. And I think that's going to be part of your keyword strategy is being more of a curated um, list of wedding recommendations and vendors. 
So I think mm -hmm. your biggest keywords are going to be like the words recommend, recommended or recommendation or the best of, um, the are best you statewide of. nationwide or worldwide? Kind of worldwide, um, okay. location specific. I have USA, UK, Australia, and Canada. But then, if someone like is a service provider worldwide, then that's fine too. Or if they ship worldwide. Okay, but you, but the people that you're going to be listing are all over the world. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that 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 makes it a little bit more difficult, but not really. It, it just means it's going to be a little bit more strategy on your on your part, right? So again what you're probably going to focus on a lot is creating individual like location pages that have like information about a specific location. So obviously like you can't do like everything right away. Like it's going to take some time, but like if you have a like 15 vendors all in Houston and you're like, perfect, this is a great blog opportunity right there to do the, like literally the best 15 wedding vendors in Houston, something like that, and then break that down into individual blog posts. So you're going to try to pinpoint individual locations over just being like the wedding list or the bride's list worldwide, because that's going to be much more difficult, almost impossible to rank for that. And the reason of be, that is, is because most people like, like when I was getting married, I wasn't just searching like wedding photographer. I was looking up like location specific wedding photographer or wedding planner in Ziwa. So things like that, rather than, you know, like just like wedding planner. So you're going to want to focus on individual pages that all of these locations are not going to be listed on your homepage. Your homepage is going to kind of remain how it is. It's very beautiful. It's very elegant. It's a little bit of a different strategy than pages because I was telling Paige she needs the location, but because you're a listing, I think your homepage is going to be much more about like your story and the reason why that you're doing this, it, like it being curated. You don't want just a general list of anyone and anything can kind of like be matched up on here. Your individual the pages though are going to be very much location specific. So do you have like a developer kind of helping you with individual location pages or how are you kind of going about like the listing process process? I actually just got the listing process done on the back end and mm. I don't know what they did. They did it. They made it work with show it because originally it was going to be pretty impossible to be done through show it and they made it happen. But on the back end on WordPress, so the pages, it might not be great for SEO. Um, they're like automatically pulled, I guess, and created mm. on the back end. So on show it, I don't have a page where I have all of the photographers mm -hmm. um it's on the wordpress end so it's a little confusing okay. so you you basically are just creating on the back end i can have a description so I, i'll put that in okay. for seo yeah i think the description will be very important i think also as you start building the list and the list like i was mentioning and like you can kind of see like oh i have a cluster of vendor vendors in this location mm -hmm. that's when you'll want to do something a little bit custom and unique about creating a page about that um, location and list out maybe your top favorites or all of them if, if it's a smaller list. That is going to be so incredibly valuable to someone getting married in a specific location because they have everything listed out. Boom, right there. Right? Yeah, I really like that idea. Thank you. Yeah. So I think, I think that's going to help. Um, my wife and I got married in, in Ziwa, Tenejo is like in Mexico. Um, and we got married at a place called Casa Angelina. I'm going to show you this because I think this is going to be, um, wedding. This is going to be cool for you to see. Ken is a photographer. She's not a wedding planner. She's not a wedding directories list, but the, the idea behind the information still works for any industry, but you're going to have Stephanie, you're going to have way more like, I don't know, authority even in this area. But what Kenna did was made a blog post about like how she planned her wedding at Casa Angelina. And it's literally on page one for Casa Angelina. So anyone ever trying to search Casa Angelina wedding, her post comes up about that. That's another strategy. You're going to have listing and directories and everything. And maybe they rank, maybe they don't. But what you'll do is because you have the knowledge and the value of all these other vendors um, 
and, and the information that they have, create blog posts about like how to get married in this place and list all the vendors, what they do, how they can help you, this and that the planners that, that are in that location. So someone has a resource that they can go, Oh my God, bam, like everything's right there for me. And then it just makes their life easier. It sends work to page, like all these different things kind of like combine, right? So, cause you're working with vendors, you want vendors to get work because if they get work, people are finding your website, your listing the website becomes stronger and better and everything like that. So you can even take a look at this if you, if you wanted to, but basically you can go through and see like, the weather, the safety, all the information that she talked about is information that she had been questioning as well. So as a planner, Paige, you can be doing this kind of stuff as well. And then as Stephanie, as a director, directory kind of website, you could be doing this as well. It's about putting together useful information. So unfortunately, like a lot of this can be automated, but that's kind of the good thing too, because if it could all be automated, we'd all just be taken over by AI. AI, literally you could just type in chat GPT, like write me 12 blog posts about these 12 venues and they'll just pump it out. Boom, done. That's not how it is. Like they, we're, they're looking for the human touch. So you guys can think creatively about what are my, my clients, my audience really looking for. Okay. So I know for Paige specifically, that would be, that would bring income in, but I want to make sure too, Stephanie, for you, is this business for you? Is this going to, this is something that you're trying to bring income in with, right? By getting people on the list. Yeah. So the vendors are going to be paying me to be listed. And right now I have a low um, founding price for them. Perfect. Perfect. So I think the difference yeah. that you're going to bring versus the the not and, and other big companies like that is you can create individual blog posts that really showcase some of your vendors and your vendors are going to book weddings from that be very happy and continue to pay for your listing by you putting in the small amount of work and again like okay so this blog post took like eight hours i think for kenna to to create overall um by like doing all the research and everything. So all of that took eight hours. She's, she books weddings at this venue. Now people email and Instagram her all the time, DM her and ask her like questions. They end up booking her. They end up booking the the wedding planner, all these things. So from eight hours of work, she's made thousands of dollars off of one blog post, right? So you That's guys amazing. can be doing that. You guys, it's so easy for you guys to be doing that as well. Stephanie, it's going to be a little bit different for you. I want to kind of figure out maybe a way that you can like even like monetize that even more maximize on that. But I, I, even though it's a new business, so you, I would recommend just starting with that, like just really showcase the, the vendors, write individual vendor reports on them, a blog, AKA blog posts about them, get tons of traffic. Um, and then I think you can even start upping your prices because if someone's like, Oh my God, like I was on um, uh, the wedding, the brides list is called the rides list. Yes, um, I was on the, yeah, I was on the <laughs> brides list and I literally booked 15 weddings. Like, and you're like, okay, prices increase. Okay. No brainer, no brainer. You know, they're still going to book. So for you, it's probably more serving your clients, which are your wedding vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and then for Paige, for you, it's providing quality information and serving the actual customers, the bride and the groom or the mother of the bride, whoever's searching for the information. Does that make sense? That was a lot of information for you guys. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Awesome. Cool. Do you guys have any other questions, like other separate questions about like design or, or strategy or blogging technique or anything like that? I might have two questions. Um, yeah. So for blogging technique, one thing that has... I want like an easy way to create blogs. So probably not what you would recommend, like what you just said with AI, but if you had like any prompts to give chat GPT, mm -hmm. as I'm getting started, I do want to have basic wedding answers in my blogs. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know, like how to tip your vendors and stuff like that. And yeah. if you had any um, actual prompts to ask chat GPT to, for them to write the whole thing. And then for me to go in mm -hmm. and edit. that's my first yeah. question. And then the second thing was just keyword searching. Like what would you recommend for my business? Because I haven't done the keywords um, mm -hmm. yet. Totally. 
So to answer your first question, um, ChatGPT, AI, that kind of stuff is really powerful. And I, I use it every single day. The, the idea is not to just like type in something, copy, paste, put it up. Like that's like, use it for inspiration, use it for like writing help, all that kind of stuff. Um, prompts are going to be very, very unique to you and your business. The way I use ChatGPT is the more detailed you get, the more detailed answers you get. Like literally say, hey, ChatGPT, I am a, and then list it out. This is who I'm serving. I'm trying to write a blog post on this. My audience is ideally this person. And the more detail you can throw in there, the more like, like real results or real like kind of answers you're going to get. So unfortunately I can't like provide like a great, like prompt for you, but a prompt strategy would be get as detailed as possible. Typically people, once they start using chat GPT, even more and more and more, we get more lazy and like, ah, why is it not like providing the right answers? Then I'm like, Oh, cause I wrote one sentence and expected it to like, give me like, you know, everything. So just be <laughs> and, really, what's that? Oh no, I just want to say, and I, I don't know if you know too, Stephanie, he has like a bunch of other videos that you can watch. He has his own like site too, Ryan does. Um, and I found those to be really helpful. Like I rewatch them sometimes like before. I yeah. read a blog post Is that in the sure. newsletter? Like I'm hitting maybe the newsletter and then from yeah. there I just search your name to see what else I can watch. Cause they're just like five, 10 minutes, but they're really helpful. Yep. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I'm on the yeah. newsletter. Yeah, that and I, Perfect. I love it. Yeah. So there's a chat GPT section in there and it kind of goes over like prompting and things like that. It's a little bit more on like content planning, like how to plan content with chat GPT and everything. But honestly, like I use chat GPT, like an assistant, like every question I have, like I'll ask and just to get an, another opinion or something like that. Um, and so it's really powerful. So I definitely recommend that as well. So, um, you're on the newsletter. That's great. <clears throat> the blog post SEO checklist this is going to really help you as well, because this is going to talk to you about or show you like detailed, like specs on what your blog should look like, how many words it should be, how many keywords it should contain, what's the topic, what's the format, things like that, right? One thing people get confused on um, and intimidated by is they think every single page on their website has to be optimized for SEO and has to be ranking, blah, blah, blah. I'm so against that. Like your, you should be able to select pages that you want to rank. What do you want that to rank for? Work on it, optimize it, and then done. Like your about page doesn't need to be like, it's automatically going to rank for the about the brides list. Like if someone literally typed in Google about the brides list, and that's kind of what you, when you want it to show up, but you don't necessarily need it to rank for like some, some crazy keyword, your homepage. Yes. All your blog posts, not all of them, but your blog posts. Yes. You can have blog posts as well that are more like stories and about my life and more journalistic. Um, but this resource right here is going to show you how you can really write a blog post. And were you, um, here when I was talking about the topic clusters, right. In this last little slide. Um, yeah, I was here for the whole thing. Yeah. That was just okay, my perfect. video was off. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so you're going to basically follow that at, at rule as well. When it comes to blogging is really just select a topic. And that could be like a set of vendors in a specific area or locations, anything like that. And really try to blog, um, that way as well. Does, did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. What was that? The second question too, or what was the second one? Mainly for like, what keywords should I even start mm. to like try to rank for with my directory? Yeah. I, I think I would, I would, for you, it, it would be your main one, it's hard though, because like, you're not in a specific location. Like you'll, you saw on Kenna's website, she has like Sarasota's recommended wedding vendors. And she has yeah. like a page on that. And that's because we wanted her to rank for if someone typed in like, like best Sarasota wedding vendors or recommend like recommended Sarasota wedding vendors or something like that. Cause we know people are searching for that. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's going to be a little bit diff difficult because I don't know if people are just like typing like like wedding vendor recommendation list. Cause it needs to be like specific to a location because the services are in a, in a specific location. Like, um, so, so that's going to be a little difficult. I think for you, your, your homepage, I would mostly focus on not specifically like a keyword or set of keywords, 
focus on user experience the most. That's your number one thing. Make sure it's very clear when people land on your homepage, they know exactly what to expect on your website. That will make them want to dive into the list, dive into the blog. Make sure that like there's sections on your homepage that are like, check out the directories, check out the blog, um, mm. find wedding like tips and tricks, um, search by location, things like that. That's going to get people to want to use your site more. So for you, your homepage, not necessarily going to be so much about like an actual um, location based keyword. It's going to be more just like wedding event, like wedding vendor directory, right? I would look at the not wedding wire and things like that and study their homepage to get okay. an idea of what they're ranking for. And th the thing is like the knots homepage isn't actually really ranking on page one for anything besides probably like wedding vendor directory or the knot, right? So that's going to be kind of you too. It's not going to be location specific. It's just going to be like the classic overall umbrella keyword, which is wedding vendor directory or wedding vendor recommendations, probably directory, right? Cause it is an actual directory. So yeah. keep it simple. Um, and don't be like discouraged if it doesn't rank on page one, um, after like a, a few weeks or, or even months, it, it may even take like a year or even two years, but that's, that's the thing with SEO. It's, it's a long-term game again. Like if you plan on doing this for a while, SEO is going to be very valuable and important because it's free advertisement. It's your 24 hour 365 salesman right? It's always going to be working for you over time. I, I don't even work for my old business anymore, which is Moreno Collective. It was like my business, but I still blog posts ranking on page one for some keywords and people still reach out to me. That's like the power of SEOs. People are always going to be finding the information that you put out online. So again, long way to say your homepage should probably just be like, like wedding vendor list. Or if you yeah. really specialize in the U.S., say like United States wedding vendorists or something like that, but probably just wedding vendor directory, um, and then really focus on long tail keywords in your blog posts. So Houston, Las Vegas, all these different locations. Yeah. Do you think that it would be okay to put like in the meta description, um, like USA, uh, UK, Canada, all those? Is it okay to put all of the locations in one little? place in the meta it's, description or is that going to hurt no it's not going to hurt it's and it's okay but it's not going to do anything for you either okay like we can't we can't really put on our website um you know paris detroit cincinnati and houston wedding planner and then google's just going to be like bam you're on paris wedding planner you're on houston wedding Planner, like all these different page ones just doesn't work like that split that up into four different pages and have four different pages on like paris wedding photographer another page on Houston and it's individual and very specific. Now you're going to start ranking. Gotcha. So on, on those pages in your description and your SEO title, it would be very specific. Google's looking for very specific pages that answer specific questions and solve specific problems, not general problems and things like that. So you're going to really want to, that's, I mean, that's, the, that's kind of like the, the benefit of SEO is you get to like rank for whatever you want. But then the hard part is you do have to put the work in. You've got to create these pages that actually bring value um, to like an, another level mm -hmm. instead of just like saying, you know, I, I serve these locations and then kind of expecting Google to rank you for all of those locations. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, cool. So yeah, just don't be afraid to create pages. Don't be afraid to try new things. It, it, SEO is marketing. At the end of the day, it's marketing on a search engine. And so you're basically want, you're going to want to try different techniques. Um, but the best one that I found is creating different pages specifically about specific topics that you know people are searching in Google. That's the most important part. What are they searching in Google? Um, Uber Suggest is another great tool to do keyword research. Um, I would, if you're going to be doing SEO for like a month or two and kind of like really focusing on that, uh, it's $29 a month, but just purchase it and you can cancel anytime. Um, and you can basically like type in Sarasota wedding photographer or whatever you are interested in ranking for, and it'll give you the difficulty and the search volume. And that way you can really do some 
research and then you'll go to Google and do some competitor research. In the newsletter, I don't know if you've made it that far, but it, I talk about that, about using Uber Suggest and then about doing competitor research in Google and all that's going to really help. Have you made it that far in the newsletter? I think I have. I've saved all of them because okay, there's cool. so much information. So I have like a yeah, little it's a lot. that's like literally <laughs> yeah. older. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No, that was my goal is hopefully people will save this. And if you go back and watch them in order and like really focus, I mean, it's like a full on course. Like it's, yeah. it, I give every single thing I know away in pretty much that entire series. So go back to them and just watch if you're interested about the content and the keyword research and all that, all those videos are going to be like the best resources I have on those. Okay. So, Thank you. and you can, if you go to YouTube and you type in like uh tonic site shop, let's see, tonic site shop, SEO newsletter. I'll show you a little trick. There is a playlist. Ooh, okay. Which is somewhere on here. I think if you like click any of these, oh yeah, here's the playlist. So, um, all of them that I ever created are all right here in one easy to find thing. So you're like, I know we talked about like image optimization. Uh, where was that? Oh, oh, where was, oh yeah. The best show at image optimization hack. Perfect. Okay. There was that video. So you can go through and find everything you need right here. Even if you haven't gotten the email yet.